In case you guys didn't know, I work as an actuarial analyst, and I know that a lot of you guys ask yourself the question, how do I get an actuary job too? I know this because I get questions all the time about how do I get a job, what's the job market look like, what if I'm switching professions, what if I don't have any exams, what if I don't have any experience? And I think that a first step to answering all of those questions is just to let you guys know my story, let you guys know how I became an actuary in terms of networking events that I went to, in terms of internships that I did. Even though it's not going to be possible for anyone to take the exact same path that I took, I think there are lessons that can be taken from my path, and I welcome the other actuaries on YouTube to make their own like how I got my actuary job video so that you guys can have different perspectives on what different paths to becoming an actuary could possibly be. So to put people on the spot, I'm talking about MJ from MJ the Student Actuary, I'm talking about Brie from Etched Actuarial, calling you guys out if you guys watch my videos, which I don't know if you do, but like, I like you guys, so you should be my friends. My path to actuariness was very traditional in that I studied actuarial mathematics at university. I was part of the co-op program at my university, which at my university meant that I was going to do four internships over the course of my undergrad degree. It has since changed, but when I went to school in Montreal, the way it worked is companies that hired actuarial interns would host what are called Senka sets, which is like a networking cocktail party the first two weeks of September. And a few of these companies were willing to extend that invitation to first year students. So I remember that on my second day of class in university, I went to a networking event and I was so awkward, you don't even know. I didn't do that many networking cocktails that year, probably like three or four, but I just remember going to one on the second day of class and you're making this small talk with the employees and they're asking, oh, you know, how many exams do you have? And you're like, well, I have, you know, two days of school, so none. Even though I didn't get a job from these networking events, I think what I did get is more confidence because I knew that the next year I was going to have to do this whole circus of networking and meeting with people again. And because it wasn't my first time the next year, I think it just sort of waved a level of stress and it gave me practice, and you can't undervalue practice. In January, so the beginning of my second semester of school, there were a couple actuarial hiring companies who held positions specifically for first year students, and I got interviews for internships with both those companies. One of them is the company that I actually work for today. The other one was probably the worst job interview that has ever happened in the history of job interviews, and I don't know if I've told this story on the internet before. I probably have, because it's like a really really good story and we're gonna we're gonna glaze over part of it we're gonna glaze over most of it because the whole of the interview was bad but at one point they asked the question how would you explain what an integral is to your mother now I had taken lots of calculus courses at this point I had tutored people in integrals and they asked me how to explain what an integral is and I forget what an integral is it mean like the word means nothing to me I was too stressed out by the interview it didn't work and so I was just like, uh, uh, what's an integral? Uh, I forget, uh, oh my gosh, uh, uh. The only thing I could remember was that an integral was an opposite of a derivative and that a derivative was the slope of a line. So the answer that I gave was something along the lines of you have a bunch of points and then you use lines to connect the points. And somehow I didn't get that job. It was weird. Like, why wouldn't they hire me? I don't know. It's so weird. Didn't get an actuarial internship that year. So for my first co-op work term, I just did general businessy work. And I think that a lot of the value that came from that was just knowing how offices run. Like previously, I had a little peer tutoring experience. I was a camp counselor. I was a lifeguard. But that's not the same as working in an office. I remember my coworkers telling me to email some person that I hadn't met. And I asked the question, do I address him as Mr. So-and-so or by his first name? I didn't know what the proper business email protocol was. In case you're wondering, people use their first names. So that internship was in the summer between my first year and second year of university. September rolls around. This time I'm invited to all the actuarial Senka sets because I'm a second year student. First years people are like, who are you? You have no experience. No one knows you. Second year you're like, important. I remember going to eight recruitment events in two weeks and before the events are over you're starting to get interviews and before the interviews are over you're starting to get job offers like it's a real shark attack. I don't know what you call it like a feeding frenzy like hungry hungry hippos where the actual students are the little beads that the hippos are trying to 
eat. Like all the companies want the top students. It's a weird metaphor. I don't know. I'm having a weird day. I remember I was getting calls for interviews and I was so excited that I was getting interviews and it was really nice and fun. I had set it out in my mind that I wanted to do at least one internship at an insurance company and one internship at a consulting company just to sort of compare and con contrast. But otherwise I didn't really care what I did. Like I didn't have a good idea of what life was versus pensions versus PNC versus reinsurance. Like I just had no idea. I was kind of like that's my ideal situation, but mostly I just want a job. I remember that one of my first interviews that I had, one of the earlier ones, they sort of made it seem like I was gonna get an offer in the interview. Like, at the end of it, they said, we know you're probably gonna get a lot of offers, so like, just, you know, be sure to get, consider us or whatever. And then I didn't get an offer from them. I heard that other people got offers and I was just so sad. <laughs> Cause at that point I didn't get any offers. And I remember a few of my friends already had offers at this point, which is like not even three weeks into September. And I just remember being at school like crying a little bit, being like, what if no one wants me? And then like two days later I had my first offer. I think I got three job offers before I stopped taking more interviews. One of them I turned down. One of them, which is the company that I work for now, I set up to do in the winter semester. And then the other one I asked them, hey, I already accepted an internship in the winter. Can I do it in the fall? And they said, oh, we're not really hiring in the fall, we'll let you know. And then they call me back like an hour later saying, yeah, sure, you'll get an internship in the fall. Like, we like you. Within the first three weeks of September, I had lined up all my internships for the next year. So I was gonna do um, January to April PNC internship. Summer, I was gonna be in school. And then September to December, I was going to be doing a health and benefits consulting internship. My first actual internship was very overwhelming and I remember uh, going to the bathroom and crying the first couple weeks. Not every day, but like, I think I probably cried like twice in the first two weeks. Um, one, because it was in French and my French wasn't good and it was kind of overwhelming to be in an environment where you didn't speak the language as well as you would like. And then two, because it was like first day, here's an all day SAS training, second day, code this in SAS, and I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand French, I don't understand SAS, how did I get this job, I'm so useless, ah! and by the end of it, I was pretty good at SAS. But one thing that I did during my internship was I mentioned that maybe I'd be interested in trying out the Toronto office because maybe what I didn't like was the French. Maybe what I didn't like was feeling a little bit separate from people because when they were chatting and telling jokes, I wouldn't understand all the jokes. So because I mentioned this, towards the end of my internship they said, we know that you have another internship lined up for the fall, so we're not gonna make you answer us right now, but if you want it, give us a call in November and you can have an internship in Toronto. This was probably the kindest thing that they could have done for me is not say, make your decision here and now, because if I had to make my decision that day, I probably would have said no. I genuinely thought that I would like consulting, I thought it would be fun and I've made a whole video, so I'll link that somewhere up here, whichever direction that is, um, letting you know the reasons why I didn't end up liking consulting as much as I thought I did. I'm not gonna get into it now because this video is already gonna be super, super long, but you can watch that. My consulting internship was positive, for sure, like a good experience, but um, towards the end of October, I was like, mm, I have this offer from the other company, I'm gonna give them a call. So I sent an email to my old boss and I said, hey, is the offer for Toronto still available? They said, hey, let's meet up for lunch. They took me out for lunch and then they said, we'll make an offer today. I said, great, I'll let you know. And then like, I don't know how many days later, probably the next day or whatever, I'm like, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good offer. I'm gonna go to Toronto. In Toronto, I really feel like I thrived. One, because I was able to speak in English. I feel like I'm a very, dominant loud personality and when I'm in when I'm speaking in French I'm much more reserved because I don't always have the right words to say so I'm spending a lot of time thinking about how to say it rather than what I'm saying but in English I just let my words flow and so I was really just able to be me and loud and personality-ish and my old boss actually like came to visit in Toronto and he saw me he was like you're just I'm like such a different person here. Also because it wasn't my first time learning SAS and I was just sort of refreshing my memory on how SAS worked. Like it was just so much easier. The people were really nice, the work was fun, and I just really enjoyed myself. Mid to end of my internship, my boss pulled me aside, different boss from my first internship, 
and he said, look, we're going to make you a job offer. Choose what city you want. Do you want Montreal? Do you want Toronto? You can have a job wherever you want. It was actually earlier on in the internship that I would have expected to get an offer, which tells me that they probably saw a lot in me, and that's very flattering in hindsight. At the time, I didn't really realize, but I remember spending a month talking to people, do I choose Toronto? Do I choose Montreal? Do I choose Toronto? Do I choose Montreal? And to have had a month of back and forth means that they made the offer pretty early. What I think they saw in me was one, strong technical skills, meaning like because it was my first time learning SAS, I was just really able to have fun with it and I was curious at learning and that was really fun for me and for them. I also had a focus on documentation and making sure that people knew the things that I worked on, they would be able to use them in the future. I was open to talking to people about what they were doing and just demonstrating curiosity and I think these are things that they picked up on. Obviously I wasn't in the discussions when they were deciding to give me the offer. If I had to guess, I'd say that's probably what they picked up on. Ultimately, I decided to choose Montreal. I picked my start date and the rest is history. Although now I live in Toronto, so you know. I'm really just a jumper back and forther. I did internship in Montreal, internship in Toronto, full-time Montreal, full-time in Toronto. Who knows where I'm gonna go next, guys? I hope maybe you learned a little bit about me or about how one goes about getting a job. For me, it was the networking events and the internships and just bouncing off an internship. It also didn't hurt that I had straight A's my first year of university. Have you guys had any actuarial internships? Have you gone to any networking events? Like, let me know if these are things that you guys do or if I was doing something right or I don't know. How common is this? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more of my face, I put out actuarial videos sometime with some frequency that is not predetermined. I love you guys. Thank you for calling. Bye.